After like five days without a new video, some of you guys might be wondering, what is Curve doing all this time? Is he putting extra hours into Overwatch so he can work on his next starting point video? Is he writing up a massive script? Is he collaborating on a big video? Well, there are a few things I did. For one, yes, I have put extra hours into Overwatch, but I've also put extra hours into watching live streams, as well as reading up on forum and reddit posts. Truth be told, my big challenge was finding out what I can talk about without constantly rehashing the same thing. If you you were to check the competitive subreddit as well as the competitive Overwatch forums, you'd see that players were preoccupied with two subjects in particular. Number one was the question of which patch stage 4 of the Overwatch League would be running on. And other than that, all you could really find in abundance were complaints about Baguette, Hanzo and Season 10 in general. A lot of us feel very strongly about Overwatch, and at this point it is no secret that many players feel like wanting to love this game when it simply does not love us back. Born in this frustration, many of us take it to the forums and Reddit in an attempt to have our voices be heard by the developers. Truth is that, I share that frustration. And for any of you guys who have been sticking around for a while, you'd know that I have done what I tried avoiding this time around. Bringing up the same issues over and over again because of how much it frustrated me. I may not learn from all of my mistakes, but I knew that I didn't want to do that again this time around. But as you can imagine, it is rather difficult to come up with video topics when not only the player base is very preoccupied with one or two subjects, but when you two share their thoughts. What I want to do instead of covering what I've already talked to death is taking a look at the way players behave when trying to have their voices be heard. I may not be a developer, but I have been through enough development drama in the past to have a rough idea of how devs and community management deal with criticism. So I will try to apply some common sense to the practice of criticizing the game and let you guys know what could be happening when you do whatever you do on the forums rather than otherwise. There is an optimal way of making sure that the devs hear your opinion and know it does not just come down to writing up a very polite forum post. But let's kick things off with the most basic type of post that I found in the past 5 days. Impulse posts. As the name suggests, those are the kinds of posts that people wrote on an impulse. If you ever wonder why people are more likely to write up negative reviews over positive ones, it's because we as humans react much more strongly to negative feelings over their positive counterparts. One example would be that humans feel about twice as bad about losing something versus feeling good about winning something of equal value, according to scientific studies. At this point, it should become very obvious to us that we are putting much more thought into what we feel strongly about in a negative way. When we enjoyed something, we're much less likely to be vocal about it because, hey, we already had our fill. We felt good about whatever we felt good about. But when we are angry at something, we want the entire world to know that we are angry and we want to get that feedback that tells us we are not the only ones being upset. We are not only looking to make our voices be heard, but we also try to confirm that our feelings are reasonable even when the way we state them is anything but. The problem with impulse posts is that they often only communicate two things. Number one would obviously be a lack of reason sides of the person writing it up. If you couldn't even take the time to cool off and write a more objective assessment of your current issue, then why would a developer care about what you have to say in the first place? They might as well expect you to not care anymore the next day once you calm down. And the other thing would be miscommunication. A lot of frustration in video games is born in miscommunication where the game itself does a poor job of communicating the fix to an issue. A boss fight might be very frustrating because the boss does not telegraph their attacks properly, thus one-shotting you unexpectedly. Similarly to that, many of us feel frustrated with Overwatch because it does such a poor job of communicating how to play the game properly. On an anecdotal basis, throughout my time watching players in lower ranks, I've seen much more success when the players in question took advantage of counterplay versus just complaining that their main hero is currently not viable. Where you might think that those impulse posts make a difference because they clearly communicate this massive level of miscommunication, it is my belief that they really don't do anything at all. After all, the devs had two years already to take care of things like a proper tutorial and scoreboard, and to this day they still refuse to tell players how to play Overwatch properly because they hold onto the idea that we should be free to play whatever we want. Even when, objectively, they are very aware of the fact that some heroes were designed to work better on certain types of maps. That means that if you really care about the game and you genuinely want it to improve, flooding the forums and reddit with impulse posts only makes sure that people who do take the time to write a proper post have more trouble being found. And when it comes to writing up one such post, it really isn't as difficult as you think. I want you guys to realize that something doesn't have to be broken to be a problem. That's to say that you don't have to justify your dislike for something with the explanation that it's overpowered. Brigitte is a good example. Even if you did not try to justify your hatred for the latest edition, 
addition to the support roster by the means of hero balance, you could still tell the devs that she simply makes the game unfun to play. And that, believe it or not, is very valid criticism. Now, I don't want to get into the details of hero balance right now because everyone is bound to have their own idea of what's broken and what isn't. But a post that declares a hero to make the game unfun to play could look a little something like this. I believe that Brigitte needs to be tweaked because she makes it very difficult for me to enjoy the game. It is frustrating to play against her because of her instant stun ability and she makes it near impossible to play a number of heroes because of the bonus armor that she provides. Those include flankers like Genji and Tracer but also Winston whose main attack gets hard countered by armor. I really hate that I have to swap to Junkrat and Farah in most of my matches because there's no other way of effectively contesting her. A post like this communicates that you would like to take advantage of the map design by running high mobility heroes which for all intents and purposes should be viable on a number of maps, especially those featuring high ground play, even when you don't explicitly say so. Your opinion does not have to be rooted in complete reason. You can state that not being able to play Winston anymore upsets you even when you are aware of the counter heavy nature of the game. It's just important that you voice why that is. You are not trying to argue in favor or against a perceived level of balance, you're just trying to share what you believe is fun or unfun. Video games are supposed to be fun. Yes, a competitive game mode hinges on proper balance, so those arguments are obviously very important. But I just want you guys to consider that not having fun with a game anymore is just as valid of a point. If players don't enjoy playing a game anymore, then they will stop playing it even when they feel very competitive about it. You don't feel like mastering something that makes you feel inherently miserable whenever you participate in it. So rather than writing up angry posts on an impulse that declare everything and everyone to be overpowered, I want you to consider that you not having fun anymore is also something you can bring up as long as you elaborate on why that is. And that is really the key here. It's not about what is the problem, but about why you feel that it is. If you just angrily shout that Hanzo is broken, even if you are right, what is a developer gonna do with that information? Quite literally nothing. But if instead you write a post along the lines of this, Hanzo's new ability rewards low skill play by providing enough arrows to spam somebody to death, while making him increasingly overpowered in the hands of a good player who can land those shots reliably. So no matter which side of the spectrum I'm on, he's frustrating to deal with. And suddenly, we're talking. Now, to some of you it may seem like these things are obvious and others might say that they are pointless. But I want you to take a step back and look at the sheer amount of posts on the forums and on Reddit that declare nothing but hatred. In light of the fact that so few people take the time to write proper feedback, I feel like it was appropriate to bring this up. But we are yet to cover the most effective way of making sure that your voice is heard. The downside is that it really only works when you feel particularly negative about the game or its competitive game mode. So here's the shocker. Just stop playing. Insane, isn't it? The fastest way of communicating that you are frustrated to a degree that you can't stand the game anymore is not by making a post declaring that you are done with it. It's literally by doing nothing. And I mean nothing. The scariest thing for a developer is having players give up on the game. And when we stop giving them feedback while just up and leaving, you can be sure that they will feel it. When I got tired of their predatory RNG loot boxes, I simply stopped buying them. I much rather bought Overwatch League skins because not only could I choose exactly what I wanted, I also knew that I could support something I thought was awesome. The League. When I got tired of competitive play and its matchmaker that is seemingly made of RNG fairy dust, I simply stopped playing. The other day my mates asked me why I did not want to stack with them on ladder and I told them I want Blizzard to know that I am tired of ranked and all its issues that have not only been present since day one but also have been addressed over and over again. This whole baguette meta is really just a cherry on top that made me stop even six stacking on ladder because I was playing the game for fun and it simply was not fun anymore so I decided to make my own. I played my own game modes with friends and whenever I didn't I just played quick play because quite frankly if I want RNG I might as well go for the full brunt of nobody cares anyway than protect pretending that I still have faith in them fixing rank play. I have done what I could. I have provided as much feedback as I can. At this point, all I can do is vote with my actions. Why would Blizzard even take my criticism seriously when I constantly bitch about competitive play while still playing it? Clearly that shows that, no matter how much I complain, I'm going to play it anyway. And that is why you don't see competitive gameplay in my videos anymore. It is truly the tale of wanting to love a game that does not love you back. The story of somebody who was dedicated since day one but eventually 
eventually got fed up with the way things were handled. But even without playing my main account, I was still dedicated to competitive play. I tried to catch as many streams as I could and I still played on old accounts where losing to RNG was not quite as frustrating to me. I did everything I could to try and make the game a better experience for myself, and I succeed. Six stacking was my ultimate solution for having fun at the game and feeling more positive about it. But when a meta like this comes around and playing the game makes you feel inherently miserable, then taking a break until the next one comes around is really the best thing you can do. And I know that all of this can come off as extremely negative, but honestly, the way that I decide to expose myself to Overwatch, I manage to feel much more at peace with it. I make my own game modes that I think are fun while avoiding the matchmaker to play with my friends. Obviously, I shouldn't have to go to such lengths in order to have fun with the game, but I just can't see myself quitting. When I go for two weeks without playing, I already crave wanting to go back. And trust me when I say that skipping two entire seasons of competitive play on my main account hurts. But if I wanted to feel remotely positive about the game, I had to make sure that I exposed myself to it in a very deliberate fashion. Hence me starting to six stack and avoiding the matchmaker whenever possible. I'm talking about all of this because I want to reach out to you guys who feel similarly frustrated. I know a lot of people who get mad beyond belief every time they play Overwatch, but they still come back the next day. And I was in those shoes before as well. This is why I wanted to share with you guys not only how you can increase your chances of having your voice be heard, but also talk about how I managed to feel more at peace with myself and this game. Sure, I do get wild up a lot in the stead of the community, because it honestly bugs me when all I can find people talk about is said frustration. I want to have fun with Overwatch and I also want others to have fun with it. And I feel this sense of obligation to try and voice what the community thinks, but I also feel obligated to talk back to you guys to try and explain things that well, quite frankly, the developers should be explaining. I want to make this game and its community a better place and I do that in whatever way I think is best. But sometimes, the best way of getting the ear of a developer is by saying nothing at all. Humble Monthly is a gaming subscription that sends a bundle of games to you every month for just $12. Every month features one or more games as an early unlock while you wait for the rest of your games to unlock later down the month. Every game is yours to keep and you can redeem them on all the usual suspects like Steam and Battle.net. Speaking of which, this month's bundle is featuring Destiny 2 as its early unlock, so you could play it right away. 5% of all the proceeds go to charity and if you use my affiliate link in the description below, I also get a monetary kickback for every new subscriber. Which means that if if you do like my content, that is one of the best ways of supporting me directly. So get your bundle today by following the link in the description below. And this concludes today's video on how to make sure that your voice is gonna be heard by the developers. It may have gotten a bit sappy towards the end, but you know, I'm just human myself. And when I see people ask in the comment section about whether or not I even still enjoy this game, it kinda brings out the more human side of me, as much as I try to be analytic at times. Sometimes you find yourself liking something more by distancing yourself from it. Between playing God of War and Destiny 2, I have gotten that urge to play Overwatch back ever the more. I mean, the other day I played Winston in Quick Play just because I really felt like playing Winston. Despite my current lack of enthusiasm for playing competitive thanks to Baguette, I still can't go three days without playing this game. But before I ramble on even longer, I'll better just call it a day. So thank everybody so much for watching and as always, feel free to leave all of your thoughts and opinions on the subject in question down in the comment section below. While you're down there, don't forget to drop me a like on your way out, subscribe if you want to see more and I hope to see you all next time.